Hi, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. Today I'm back in the laboratory here in Southwest Florida and what I want to do is give you a follow-up on how to treat the deflasked orchid. So I've gone into a lot of information about how you actually do the deflasking process, how you take the orchids out, how you, how you handle them, how you place them in the, uh, the medium. Bark is what I use, orchiata bark is what I use. But what I want to do is go over the treatment beyond that. I've had some viewers contact me in the comments and say, I do it, I do it almost like you say and then everything dies or I get a lot of rot or I have some issues. So what I want to do is talk about, um, you know, give explanations behind what I do, but then also show you exactly what I do in order to have good survival. And I do have very high survival. Um, I, I think 95% or higher survival of the deflast orchids. I do want to back up just a little bit first and then show you what my flasked orchids look like because I want to show you there's a couple of things in these two flasks that I want to share with you. Well, the orchids that I'm, I'm deflasking generally look like this and, and these guys are pretty big. Uh, they're nice and it's important to have good starting material. If you have little tiny orchids, they aren't going to deflask well. I'm going to reach down here and show you. Um, this is a this is a um, orchids that were just transferred um, a, a couple of weeks ago into a into this big medium from a petri dish, and these are tiny. And these aren't even. I mean, look at the difference. You you need nice, tall, um, really nice looking orchids in order to have the high effic high, highest efficiency survival. Um, I wanted to show you these because. Um, these show something and I've had people visit me in the lab and the first thing that they see if they look at these is the brown leaves in here and they're pretty obvious. And so they say, oh no, your orchids are contaminated or they're dirty or there's something wrong. And, and the reality of this is, is that they're not contaminated. Um, there may be something wrong, but the more I do this, the more I realize that there's certain things that you can ignore. So believe it or not, the brown on some of these leaves and some, not all of these orchids, I ignore it. It, it kind of means that they're that these are ready to come out, but it's not something that I'm going to throw. I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to throw these out. I'm going to use these. I'm going to deflask these. And again, not all of them are like this. So I can reach over and get some more flasks, and they they don't have this, but. It's just something that happens and I don't want you to be too concerned about that. And along those same lines, we may see some browning on the leaves that we deflask and, and I just cut those off. Um, it's not really an issue if you know what you're doing. So anyway, the biggest, one of the, one of the things is it's good to have big, nice uh, plants in flasks that you're starting with. And again, if you've got some miniature orchids or some other types, they're not going to look like this. But these are both, uh, these are two different large cat layers, and this is what they look like for me. Okay, I've, and again, I've shared videos with you about how they, how I deflask, but I want to show you some of these and I want to show you uh, what I do. So after I deflask, I put them in these tubs and this is a very high humidity uh, environment. And so I water them well. Um, I have emphasized that I put plants in Orchiata bark and it's 100% classic grade Orchiata. And I do that because I think there's something in the Orchiata that's beneficial that actually may reduce um, you know, fungal and bacterial growth. This is what some of, the, some of the good media, what they do, is you'll have a reduction of certain growth and you'll have beneficial growth. And what you can see here is the roots, the nice green roots that are growing on the surface of the Orchiata. And you can also uh, imagine that there's nice roots that are down in the medium as well. And what you can see on some of these is some really nice additional growth that's coming out. So here's a nice pseudobulb coming out here. There's another nice pseudobulb coming out of the side of this one. These have been in here for a while, but what you do is you keep these things in a high humidity uh, chamber and what I do, this is just a, an inexpensive um, polypropylene container that I've got, I get at the big box store 
and I put them on and I put them under the lights uh, in the laboratory here. Uh, and then, but it, once a week, I take them out and then I remove the old water that's in there and then I add the new water. And I wanted to show you this because I want you to understand how much spare water is in there and how much new water I add. So what I'm going to do is tilt the container to the side and to the back and then I'm going to take up all of the old water and then we're going to add some new water. So what you may not be able to sell, there's not, not that much in here, but what you may not be able to tell, but there is, this water is not perfectly clear. So when you, you fertilize, and I do fertilize with a very weak solution every other week or every three weeks, um, and then I also add other things. And what happens is that you can get algae growing in the water, and I usually don't worry about that too much. Now, even when you look in here, you can even see on the tags there's algae, green algae growing on the tags in some of these things, but there's algae on the bottom of the container. Um, it's, and you just can't worry about these things. The main thing that you look for is the orchids, and you look for nice root growth and nice growth of the pseudobulbs. All right. How much water do I add? So this is, I have this nice spray bottle. I just use tap water for this. Other people are crate. They, they go overboard, use reverse osmosis or, or distilled water or deionized water. And I just use tap water because our tap water here is very good. So this is just regular tap water. And what I do is I just add a lot of water and I make sure that in the case where some sometimes the orchiata looks wet, in other cases the orchiata looks a little drier right here so you can see how this is maybe dark and this is lighter. The ones that are lighter, I, I make sure to get them really well until they do turn dark. But I water them pretty well and that's why every week I have to remove the excess water, but that's all there is to it. I should say this is a, um, what I use is a, this, this is something that people don't normally have. So this is a pipette or a 25 mil pipette. You can use a turkey baster or something like that. That's fine too. But again, um, so you can see how much water, I'm going to tilt it to the front. So you can see how much ex how much excess there's there's a lot of water in there, and I'm not worried about it rotting. I'm just not worried about this rotting at all. But that's that's how this is. I'm going to do this to one more container, so that you can see. So just so you can see what it looks like again. So I move over and we'll take a look at this next container right here. And again, it's the same type of thing. This is a different. Um, this is just a, a different cross right here, um, and what I'll do is I'll tilt this, and this has this has a lot more. That has a lot. You can tell it's green. I think that has a lot more algae in it, but it's okay. Orchids do not seem to mind the algae that's in there. Okay, and then same thing is that I will then take this. And these are pretty wet, so I don't need to water these. I can tell because of the orchiata is so dark, I don't need to water these that much. So just a little bit of water there. Again, but you should be able to see how much water is that. I, I overwater it. I overdo it. And I'm not worried about rot because the orchiata uh, really does tend to protect the plants. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to share with you is something that I started doing fairly recently. And so I've started um, based on some results that a master seedling grower shared with me. I started watering at the early points soon after deflasking uh, with a mycorrhizal solution. And again, this is not a fertilizer. This is just a, um, these are beneficial microbes that you can buy. And what I buy, what I've tried is Myco Bliss because that's what this person recommended. I'm evaluating uh, some other, other blends, but I want to show you that these are some more freshly deflasked uh, orchids. And these have only been deflasked, I think maybe around, it looks like, around two and a half, three weeks ago. So, um, you know, these are just deflasked. They haven't, these have not been fertilized yet. 
Um, I'll fertilize maybe a week after I treat with the mycorrhizal. But what I do is I take the, the mycorrhizae in the bag and I weigh out about um, 10 grams of the mycorrhizal. And there's, a, there's a carriers, there's a lot of stuff in there. It's not pure mycorrhizal fungi. There's other things in there as well. And so I'll weigh out 10 grams on a scale and, and you, you know, just about 10 grams and it looks like it might be maybe a tablespoon or two. Um, I don't think the amount matters that much. And then I mix it just in water. Now the directions on the bag of the mycobliss say just to add it dry to soil. But again, that, that's the application of the mycorrhizae. Most people use them in, in terrestrials, in soil-based plants. And there are no mycorrhizal specific um, brands that are for orchids. And again, I'm trying to work with people to get them to develop those, but that's not the case. Anyway, uh, about 10 grams of the mycorrhizal uh, powder, and then I add it to uh, about 500 mills of water. And then what I get it, what I do is I create a suspension, as you can see right here. Now what I need to do first, getting ahead of the game here, what I need to do first is remove, just like what I've done before, I'm removing the old leftover one. This is just water and maybe there may be some fertilizer in here. Actually, I, these haven't been fertilized yet. But I'm just removing the old stuff. And there was a lot in here, which is just fine. And then I will add the mycorrhizae. I do want to show you this, though. As we look at this, there is a leaf here that kind of looks bad. If this would look really bad, I might try to cut it off. Um, and I don't know if this is more black or, um, or purple. Um, this one is definitely browning, but I'm not too concerned about this. Here, but you know, what you can do is here, and I'll, I'll, I can show you this. This is a pretty clean area. So what I'll do if it's bad and I think there's issues, I ju you just cut it off right below uh, where this was. All right, so why do you add the, the mycorrhizae? Again, it's, a, it's the type of thing that the mycorrhizal, um, these Organisms, organisms tend to help the plant survive by uh, increasing the ability of the plant to take up nutrients. Orchids in nature are its requirement for the seeds to associate with mycorrhizae. It, plants do it, all plants do it, um, but here we're introducing, we're intentionally introducing a mycorrhizal solution to these orchids. And the idea behind it is these are beneficial fungi, beneficial organisms, and it may actually, they may counter or they may fight or they may enhance the ability of the plant to fight the, um, the, the pathogenic organisms. So it's beneficial for the plant. And I've used this just a little bit and I've, I've seen the results and I really like it. So, um, in it, but it does come out, if you'll see this, <laughs> it, it does come out and I'll water it at the same level that I use for that I'm watering my other plants. So I add a lot of it and I'm getting it on the leaves and it looks like, oh no, look at all this white stuff I'm getting on the leaves. But this is a beneficial microbe, beneficial fungus. So it's just fine. And what you'll get though, if you look at this, what you'll get is it's real pasty, uh, the, the water that's left over here when I have to pull off this water next week, it'll be pasty and white and it'll look kind of bad, but I'm not worried about it because it's a beneficial organism that's here. All right, so let me do one more container that was also deflasted just a short time ago. And what I'll do first again, like what I've been doing, what I've shown you before, is I will remove the old, in this case the water that's here, not really, there may be a little bit of, of algae growing here, but I'll remove this. And then I try, I, you know, and you don't need to get it completely, all, all of it removed off. What's happening here is I'm getting uh, some of the bark is clogging the tip of the pipette. 
And so you just got to have to work that out. All right, what I want to show you here, though, is, is, this, is uh, this is really remarkable. So this was deflast about, about two and a half weeks ago. But look at the incredible, this is one of my new hybrids I'm pretty excited about. But look at, look at the root growth from really all of these. It's really, it's phenomenal. Uh, one thing, again, that's a little, it's a little bit striking, and, and I showed this to somebody last week, and he says, have you tested these for viruses? But um, there's, you know, there's, a, there's some anthocyanin, there's purple pigmentation in some of these leaves. Um, but some of these, some of these pseudobulbs, some of these leaves um, are just huge. And, and again, new growth coming out here, two, you know, two and a half weeks ago. All that, all that growth right here, all this root growth is two and a half weeks, which to me is just remarkable. Um, this is my first deflasking of this new, of, of this line. Okay, so same thing as I've showed you previously. I'll hit this with the mycorrhizal fungus solution and it's got, you know, this, this has five different mycorrhizae that are in here. Other ones have different numbers of mycorrhizae, but you know, I'm not worried about the whites on the leaves. Again, you can see it kind of makes it, uh, looks like a milky solution that's in there, but uh, it's fine. I've done this before and they seem to, this seems to work very well. So um, what I'm curious about is to see what kind of benefit there is long-term from this. There is no detriment. I've, I've done this before. The orchids aren't harmed and, and I, but I think since, since I've been doing this, I've been getting very high survival once I take these plants out of these containers and put them outside. So um, again, what I'll do, so the mycorrhizal inoculum I'll do after three weeks, um, after weekly changing of water, and then I haven't actually done a second mycorrhizal treatment on, on any of these things. Once they're inoculated and once the, essentially the plants and the roots are colonized, you shouldn't have to do it again for a little while. At least that's my thought on this. Um, and then though, once you, uh, you know, if, after maybe after a month or after a little bit longer, you start fertilizing with a weak solution. And what I'm doing is I'm keeping the orchids under these LED lights inside uniform temperature 16 hour days i'm keeping them like this for about three months and then i just take them outside and they seem to be doing really well but they get big once you keep them in these containers inside for a few months all right um, that's all i have for today i hope i I wasn't too confusing or too boring or all of that stuff. Um, I just wanted to, again, provide a really a lot of detail on treatment of these orchids after deflasking. All right, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did and you want to keep on seeing them, it would help me out if you could click on like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. All right, again, I hope you enjoyed it, and happy propagating.